Don't worry. No, but we already have a package. Oh, okay. <laughs> While everybody's getting settled in, we've got it. If you're going to grab something to eat, you might want to do it really quickly while we're waiting for everyone to take off their coats and settle in, and then we can just start with the meeting and keep flowing without maybe having to get up and stop again for a few. Sure. Hi, Dorothy. All right, everyone, we're going to begin in one minute. All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome again to the North Northeast Community Development Initiatives Oversight Committee meeting. Um, we appreciate your presence. And just by way of kind of housekeeping tonight, we have uh, some individuals who've called in on the phone. We want to acknowledge you in just a moment or at least give you an opportunity to do so. Those of you who are on the phone, uh, hopefully you have access to all of the packet of information we're going to be covering tonight. Um, we don't have anyone in the audience at the moment, but as the night goes forward, it may change, and there may be individuals who will want to interact and those moments and the agenda where there's that, that opportunity. However, um, we will go with what we have. So Happy New Year, everybody, Happy New Year. and uh, good to see you. So by way of identifying uh, the numbers and the members of the Oversight Committee that are present, I'm merely going to ask you to say your name for the record that you are present. And we'll begin with those who are on the phone. Uh, this is Cotton Lee with Main Street Alliance of Oregon. Hi, this is Shannon Olive. Good evening. To the left and right. Jennifer Huang. Jonisha Smith. Haben will do. Leisha Posey. I'm Maurice Romney. You should just stay on video. If, whatever, if that light is on. Red. Yeah, it should be on. If it's red, it should be, it's on. No, it's green. It's on. Vicki Gwynn, Legacy Emanuel. Dorsey Johnson. Kimberly Moreland Irving, uh, Project Manager. Wonderful. So we have a sufficient number to be able to do the business we need to do. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing. Um, so as you look at your agenda, we've got several things we need to cover uh, tonight. I will not talk through each item on the agenda. We're able to, to secure that with our own reading. Uh, so let's go right into item number two. And since Tori is not here,
Kimberly will be taking that one. Happy New Year, everyone. It's so nice to see you guys. I also want to tell um, the folks on the teleconference that I just sent you a live stream um, link. And so if you wanted to look at the live stream, you'll be able to see the, the, the information that's on the uh, PowerPoint or on the projector. So you'll be able to follow um, that as you uh, at the meeting um, moves forward. But it's my pleasure to introduce Harvin Wodu as the co-chair. Um, she will be sh sharing this responsibility with Lisa Posey as um, they kind of divide up the responsibility of, of chairing the committee and helping to manage the oversight committee responsibilities. And so thank you, Harvin, for uh, your commitment to the, this uh, committee. And we look forward to working with both of you. Did you want to say um, No, I'm excited for the new year, and um, I'm excited for our new setup. The room looks amazing, and I'm looking forward to more community engagement and a new start and fresh new year. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. We'll move right into item number three. All right. So Dr. Ho, uh, I yes. just want to say this is so great. I would never have to go to more meetings in person. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to have you come to meetings in person. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the meeting minutes from the December meeting. You should have those in front of you. So if you want to take a moment to read over those uh, minutes, I will take a motion to accept them when we're finished. Yvonne will also have the minutes on the projector as well. Do we have the other? Look at that one. Oh. No. Mm -hmm. We don't have the, the November ones in front of us. There should have been uh, two, min two minutes uh, for you to review the one from November and the one from December. Because we did not have a quorum, we wasn't able to approve um, November and December. But the minutes were sent um, to you as part of the, the, pa the email that was sent out with all the meeting material. So, and Yvonne has, it, has them on the screen as well. Are you looking for a motion for at the same time, or are you looking at individual motions? I think that can be entertained by uh, Madam Chair. Uh, let's do individuals. So let's start with December, since everyone has that in their hand. Is there a motion? I'll make the motion to accept December's meeting minutes. Second. 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 Is there any questions? Does anybody have any corrections? All right, the motion is approved. All in favor of approving that? Aye. 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 All right, approved. So then if you don't have your November copy in front of you, you can use your phones, you can look up here on the screen, or you may have already had a chance to review it and um, I'll give another minute and then I'll uh, entertain another motion to accept. I'll make the motion to accept November's meeting minutes. Is there a second? Yes, mm -hmm. I second. <laughs> Any questions, concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion approved. Wonderful. So we've gone through three of the agenda items. Going to item number four, which is all business or unfinished items. Um, Maurice and Alicia, project charter and approval. I got I can. Well, I know that we've gone through this project charter a few times, so we're not going to go through it again. Uh, we are looking a motion to 
accept this charter, this charter, once it's accepted, we'll be able to do a lot of the work that we're hoping to accomplish with this committee. So we'd be looking for a motion to accept our draft charter. Yes. There's a copy oh, of yes, the yes. charter in your handout. So another is there a motion to accept this charter? Alicia, or Lisa, sorry. I wanted to make sure that that changed, that the two and the four on the absences was corrected before we Okay, vote. so is there a motion on the floor? Is there a second for that motion or no? Second. All right, perfect. Thank you. So now for questions, Dorsey, you had a question? Um, no, I just wanted to review it before I. Please take your time to review any questions. The initial, the initial draft. So there is a draft here, and then there's a second accompanying piece of paper that is oh. update on charter changes. Okay. So what you'll, these changes have been incorporated into your draft, if I understand correctly but they're just on a separate sheet of uh, paper to point those out clearly what those changes are. So read through those changes on the separate sheet first and see if you have questions there on what this, these changes mean for the charter or how they may affect your role. Specific things that you're looking for? Just a section talked about the absences. Oh. And the two is like something that was. Should be under section four under attendance. I think Dorsey is what you're referring to. Page three. Thank you. Okay. It was updated. Just wanted to make sure I'm good. Does anyone have questions around the proxy and what that means? All right, any other questions? All in favor of accepting this draft charter as our new charter for the uh, CDI Oversight Committee. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, so move. We have our new charter. Excellent. Excellent. We will go to section B, report out. We'll just go right down the list. So, expansion, Icura expansion, Jennifer, Nothing. any update? Nothing to report. Nothing to report at this time. Thank you. Project working group will be deferred to Kimberly Moreland. Um, as you guys know, because we sent out an email um, sharing that Kara um, Stoudemire Phillips is, will be representing um, the committee on the project working group, and um, Shanicia Smith will be our alternative, alternate. And um, they will have a meeting, their first meeting on January 31st. It will be an orientation. Um, and uh, at some point, they are planning uh, to have a, a larger community forum, um, but that will We'll receive more details after the project working group have their first meeting. So um, that's pretty much all we have to report. Is there a list of the project working group? You know, we can get that to you. They have selected 19 members, um, and uh, from uh, I think it was a list of 24. And um, Leslie, do you want to? Yeah, yeah, 24 people, and 
there's 19 people who can serve in our oversight committee. On the? Me, I'm sorry, the project working group. And when did you say the first meeting was? It's January 31st. And I believe it's going to be at the June Key. Right. <coughs> From the 2 to 4.30. From 2 to 4.30? 2 to 4.30. And yeah. those meetings are open to the public. But, um, so. And is that, the, is that the time and place for all of the meetings, or is that just the orientation, or you don't know? I'm not sure. Um, just the first meeting. Okay. Just the first meeting. Do you have a question? Yeah, I was just wondering, I know that there was some questions around all 19, knowing that they were on and committed to serving, so it sounds to me like they all are on board. And yes, they all have been confirmed at this point. Okay, that's good to hear. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? So the alternative role basically is for those people who are not, um, who go off of the committee, then the alternatives will be able to be may maybe considered as uh, on the actual committee. Um, let me just say that again. I'm sorry. Can you speak into your mic? Sorry. Okay. I'm talking about um, my role is going to be an alternate for that committee. So that means that you have a set number that represents, what is it, 12 or 13? I believe it was 14 organizations. 14 organizations. So in the event that someone comes off the committee, then I'll take a different position in that? Yes, if, if Karis um, decides or cannot um, attend a meeting or can no longer serve, then you would take her, her place. Okay. I'm sorry, just to clarify, she would take her place per meeting or only if Karis decides that she is? Only if Karis decides, mm -hmm. that's my understanding. You're, rep um, you're representing the oversight committee which is one of the 14 organizations. So the 14 organizations, are they holding that position or is it the individual in the 14 organizations? So in other words, if a member of the organization, are they representing both themselves? Are they representing the organization or which the, one comes They're representing the organization. Okay. Any other questions for the project working group? Okay, we will move on then to the budget advisory committee, Maurice. And I was unfortunately unable to attend that meeting, so I'm hoping Kimberly, you were there to advise this group. You know, I, I, I didn't go attend the meeting. <laughs> So we can report back next time. Is there yeah, we'll is still another meeting to be had? I think they were planning on having three. Three um, meetings. So, but we could report out on what the decisions were then. The meetings are really not for staff. It's, it's, um, we have a few managers who attend, but it's, it's for our citizens and community members. So. I'll report back next month. <laughs> we will keep note of that. Thank you. The next item is um, item number five for public comments, and we don't have any uh, public for public comments unless um, there's anything from Portland Housing Bureau representative, Ms. Leslie Goodlow. Not unless people have questions for you. Wonderful. Well, thank you. We're glad you're here. Thanks for attending. Let's go to item six. Okay, so Kimberly and I met about a week ago or two weeks ago to discuss some uh, the current state of the subcommittees. And so we kind of just wanted to take the opportunity to review those subcommittees um, and folks that are listed on the subcommittees. Um, so you should have a document in your pile here that shows um, the current sub subcommittees. And next to each one, it says Looks ongoing. Like once a fiscal year, ongoing as needed, and once every three years. So the hierarchy is that the ones that are ongoing, uh, currently in place right now, are, are towards the top of the list. 
and the ones that have a more irregular schedule are at the bottom of the list. So if you just take a quick second to review that to see if your name is listed, if it's listed correctly. Also, you might want to take a brief moment to see if your name is not listed and you would like to be added somewhere. So just start thinking about that. Madam Chair, do we know that everyone on the phone has this list, this information? You should have received it in your email um, packet. So if you if you are able to view your emails current right now, then you should be able to find it. It may also be in your binder because we have received this list before. And if they're watching live stream, they can see it on the on the screen. On the screen. <laughs> I mean, if it's helpful, I can read them. But since we have plenty of time. <laughs> we do have to. Yeah, would you do that? Sure. So for the community outreach uh, committee, which is ongoing, we have Shannon Olive, Shonisha, Shonisha, Shonisha Smith, Haben Wudu. And then for the cultural business hub, which is also ongoing, we have Vicki Gunn, yeah. Quinn, sorry, pardon, sorry, Vicki, Jennifer. Khan Lee, Leisha Posey, Maurice Raming, and Ms. Shonisha Smith. For the Interstate Corridor Urban Renewal Area Expansion Subcommittee, we have Vicki Gwynn, Jennifer, Dorsey, Shannon, Leisha Posey, Shonisha, Kara Stoudemire Phillips. And then we have what we have as a new committee, which would be the Member Selection Committee, We'll be working to find the two new members that will complete our committee um, and bring us back up to 15. And we currently have no one on that list, so you want to think about that a little bit. We can talk more in depthly about what that will look like. I'll let Kim talk about that. Sure. We we will have an email blast going out tomorrow, um, which will um, ask uh, provide a link to a uh, application form, and we are kind of. Uh, prioritizing members who have um, real estate development um, and business ownership and we also have um, revised the application to include a, a, a age group for 16 to 24 and on the application form we are you know saying that we're encouraging that youth in that age group will apply so that should be going out tomorrow and um, if there's any other considerations or or specific skill that you want to target, um, let us know. Um, when I can remember his name, <laughs> um, the, the gentleman from the Albina Community Bank, when he left, we kind of lost that kind of business development. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Irene was more also a business owner. And so it would be great to replace those uh, skill sets. So if, if, but if there's others that you want to consider, um, so Michael. So this, this would be our youth representative? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And um, we chose the age group uh, 16 to 24 because that's consistent with our workforce youth. That, that was my yeah. youth group. Basically, mm -hmm. we ain't washed out the 24, but this youth, okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't, I didn't understand you, Michael. It, it, it's youth. Okay. Well, it's mm -hmm. not been 24, but it's youth, so that's it. Um, how does that but I would like to volunteer for this committee, because uh, we're no longer doing the charter update. So, so I do have some uh, finding sheets I'll pass along as soon as we get done reading the rest of these okay. uh, committees. So any more questions for the new member selection committee? So we're a little bit behind the gun on getting this process started. We wanted to try to get that out at the beginning of January. Um, so it will be going out for sure tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and you, if you know of anybody personally that you think should um, apply for this, will we also get a link to the application? Yes, you will. Anyone who's on our mailing list uh, for the Northwest East Community Development Initiative, um, which is a pretty broad list and include all of the oversight committee members. Um, I was going to say that um, we're asking for the deadline to be January 31st. So 
um, we would give them like three weeks to respond. So hopefully we can have that person um, on board by the next meeting. If the subcommittee could, could meet um, prior and select the individuals, if that timeline too tight, or we could have them available um, on board by March. If, because I'm hope I'm hoping that we could um, assemble the subcommittee uh, to review the applications and select that individual by um, mid February, and then we can have Kimberly um, Branham review our recommendations and have that finalized by um, our, our meeting, which is the fourth. Is it the third or third or fourth? It's the third. It's the third, yeah. So maybe we have to back that up a little. It may have to be March, um, depending on how fast we can pull the subcommittee together. Right, and and allow enough time for people to respond to the application. Um, because today is the 19th, so the 31st is not, it's really like two weeks, not yeah. three weeks, so. So we can and tomorrow is Friday. People may be away from their emails. So depending on the response, if we have a huge response, a back, yeah. um, then maybe we can move forward at the end of January. But if we don't, I think we need to at least allow for, allow for three weeks to, um, so that we can talk to yeah. folks. I, so I think that would be fair, yeah. three to four weeks. And even having that email go out a couple times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can. Uh, maybe try to have someone on board by our March meeting. That sounds that sounds great. So who would who would be providing the outreach for that particular thing? Would it be press of Portland? Or would it be this committee here? <coughs> who would be responsible for the outreach? Right. And actually, you know, we would um, send it out on our our list, though. But you can share it with your network because you'll have the link, and so we can. Um, e either get, provide you with a hard copy of the application, but you'll have a, a link that you can easily share with your network. Uh, did I, is that? Did you have some concerns about people not being able to access the link? No, I just wanted to know what would the process be pretty much for doing providing outreach and getting that person on board would it be something that we as a committee would be the subcommittee would would, would lead out in that in conjunction with press of portland so once the, we receive the application the subcommittee will review those applications mm -hmm. and okay. determine you know which individuals rank however we decide to rank that um, and then once we pick the two individuals uh, we'll give those names to kimberly branham to review and then she makes the final make the final decision. decision. Okay. Um, so I have. Uh, so if we're trying to shoot for the February meeting, uh, how about if we make the applications due by the fifth? Maybe the subcommittee meets like that Wednesday, which is the seventh, mm -hmm. and then Kim can make her decision by the twelfth, and then we have someone by the fifteenth. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we can do it. If we do the fifth, that's three weeks, three full weeks that we're giving people. Okay. And then we, as committee members, maybe we step up our outreach just because of the time constraints. But I just think it's very valuable for someone to be part of the process early on, especially since we're doing a fresh start kind of thing. I, I agree, I think we could do that. Okay. And we'll share the link on our, our Prosper Portland website, on all of our social media mm -hmm. platforms. So we'll get the word out, but it would be it would be better to if you could um, share it within your network, um, especially with different community organizations. So. Mm -hmm. And we could also have the option if by the fifth we didn't feel like the outreach was sufficient, we didn't get the applications that we needed when we come the nineteenth. I mean the fifteenth is the next meeting. On the seventh, yeah. we can say, hey, we didn't have the application applicants that we needed. The outreach was weak. We didn't we set out to do so, we can push it another month, but I think it's a good goal to have. <laughs> push it another month? Well, if we don't have, you know, if we haven't done what we needed to do, and if we don't have the applicants that we need, then let's say maybe 10 people apply it, then maybe we can push it. Right. I think we should, that's a plan. And I think it's something Great that the, uh, the subcommittee can decide mm -hmm. at that point. 
So, so far, we only have one person on a subcommittee. <laughs> yeah, that's well, there would be some easy decision making then, you know. <laughs> because this was holding us up, uh, we're not full staff. It's it's not holding us up from. But it's slowing us done. down. But we would just like to get this out of the way at the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And also, when you have a full um, committee, you most likely have a quorum at each meeting. Mm -hmm. So are there any others who would like to be on the? I'll do it. You like it? Uh, it sounds like a plan. So is the cultural business hub still something that's actively ongoing? Um, just because I'm, I don't want to stretch myself too thin by volunteering. Uh, but I remember a few meet, uh, hearing that it would be put on hold until the hill block site was decided on, or however that. Um, no, at this point it's 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 ongoing. Okay. The hill block is now kind of a separate project. At some point, it's going to return once they decide if they want to be, uh, if that site will be uh, amended into our URA, but, but that's down the road. Okay. All right, so any other questions about the new member selection committee? There's a sign in sheet coming around now for that um, committee. Um, I actually have a question. Is there a number that we're com comfortable with, like how many people in the subcommittee would be a good number? Yeah. I just know that there's a maximum, which is also, I think, quorum or less than quorum. Less than, okay. less than quorum. So the minimum, I think, two. So it would be seven is a max. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But minimum, if two is all we have, two is all we have. So what? <laughs> well, we already have I think two is fine because yeah. you know you have Troy and I will we'll just send it around. So we'll just send it around. Okay. Okay, so if you turn to the back of the page, I'll continue on with the community livability grant, which is once a fiscal year, and that's Jennifer, Vicky, Khan, Maurice, and Karis. The project charter is ongoing as needed which is Jennifer Maurice um, Miss Smith Karen and Hobbin the North by Northeast business navigator which is once every three years is Dorsey Leisha Maurice and Karis so one that's missing off of here I guess would be the new impact study there's actually two missing off of here well the impact study, um, we was, I'm not sure because, well, because we kind of decided that, um, you know, that it's going to be uh, kind of, we drafted the scope of work. I'm not sure that needs to be a subcommittee, um, but if, but if that's what you, you know, would like to do, that's fine. So impact study will still needed to be reported back to the larger committee with the meeting the information that happens in those meetings in terms of determining the direction of the impact study mm -hmm. if I'm understanding but um, the reason why I was thinking maybe it's not a subcommittee because we uh, you'll be working with a, a consultant to kind of draft the scope of work and I, I thought maybe we could just continue with you and Maurice to do that okay. and at that point, when we hire a sub, a sub a consultant, then they can kind of go with it and report back. Okay. Yeah, I don't really see that as a kind of committee. Okay. All right. And the last one that we have, which is not on your list, would be the investment allocation subcommittee. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little Sorry. bit about that one? Yes. And the reason why I left that off because it hasn't been approved by the oversight committee. And I, I know that's something that we had talked about when we met. And so I kind of want you to kind of talk about what your, okay. your thinking is behind that, that subcommittee. So that's, uh, the, the idea behind this subcommittee and the reason I want to bring it forward to the full committee today is that I think that when we have smaller groups that can digest information and bring it back to the board, I think that information is uh, um, better understood uh, in smaller chunks. So when we look at something like the progress report or the budget that Maurice, uh, the budget meetings that Maurice is attending or how money is being spent or we have issues 
were like around when we were um, uh, trying to decide or thinking about when we would be recording the sessions, that this smaller group would be able to look at those budgetary or financial um, um, decisions or agenda items or progress reports that we get from people and kind of synthesize that into a report that's more digestible for us as a committee. So Prosper Portland has a budget. We don't know what it looks like. We may not understand what it looks like, but if Maurice and Hobbin and Michael got together and kind of broke that down into some chunks for us to understand how it might impact our work, I think that will help us to move us forward um, when decisions need to be made that that may impact. Is that kind of clear? Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's a great idea um, because the, the progress report that I'm going over is going to be high level and, and kind of it, it's going to show how much money has been spent as part of this $32 million. Um, the budget advisory committee that Maurice attends really it, it does not include the $32 million as general fund, and so, but it, it still impacts this effort. And so we can be able to really kind of, you know, share more details about the, the impact of, of our fiscal decisions. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I, I think it would be great um, because one um, decision that's coming up is uh, what to do with the money that was allocated, for, allocated to the um, accessory dwelling unit. Um, that may not be going forward. And so um, the investment allocation can come up with recommendations and then to share with the oversight committee about their thought about uh, where that those dollars to go mm -hmm. to the, and which of the other, or which of the five strategic areas should we now take that 1.5 mm -hmm. and put it. So those, I think it's a great, um, a great subcommittee. And this, and this subcommittee should also be ongoing as needed. So it may, be, may not be one that needs to meet every month, every two weeks, but maybe once a quarter. Every time we get a progress report, you guys take this information back and kind of break it down for us and present it to us um, in smaller chunks so that we're not spending the bulk of the time just trying to understand or comprehend and, and that we do understand and comprehend at some level what's being shown in these progress reports. So it was a quarter every three months? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, well. Every three months. As needed. Okay. And as we, um, the progress report that I'm going to uh, review today is an annual report, but um, we, we will have quarterly reports every three months. And, and also, I, I, I believe that the um, this subcommittee can inform the format of the progress report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess since it's not an official committee yet, we would need to have a motion to entertain it if anybody thinks it's a worthwhile venture um, to get it included as a part of our subcommittee roster. Any motion? I have motion. Yeah. <laughs> I second. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Any other questions? We can try it. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? All right, so we have a new subcommittee. Yay. <laughs> Yay. I make a motion that Hob and Maurice are on. No, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sign up. That's actually one of the reasons I joined this committee. So. That's awesome. I'm really excited about it. That's awesome. Excellent. Shall we move to the next item? Mm -hmm. One more? Go ahead. A little bit more. So, mm -hmm. so what we, Kim and I thought would be a good idea is that each subcommittee would have a lead, and that lead would be in charge of making sure that subcommittee um, meets, that they choose a time and place, and when that subcommittee um, most likely can all get together and they would be the ones that would report back to the larger committee um, and kind of help to devise whatever plan, strategic plan, or however that subcommittee is going to move forward with the help of the other subcommittee members. <laughs> so I know that I spoke to Shannon, and she said she would be willing to be the lead of the um, community outreach subcommittee. And so if there are others of you who are listed on this list and you feel like you want to be the lead of that subcommittee, 
I know Jennifer was acting as the report back person for the cultural hub. This is adding a slight bit more responsibility, so I don't know if you would still feel comfortable acting as that lead. Yes. Awesome. Was that the cultural hub or the, the I mean, expansion? Oh, expansion? Expansion. Expansion, yeah. I'm sorry. The expansion. So we would need one for the cultural hub. Maurice, was, would you be yeah. willing to do the project charter? Yeah, I'll be willing to do the project charter for anyone that someone has an interest in doing that my name's associated with. Okay. All right. I'll do the new uh, committee member selection. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the new one that we just passed? The investment hour. Yeah, I can do that one. Okay, you said something. I'm doing a new committee. Are you not doing the <laughs> new committee? Yeah. You are doing a new committee? Yeah. Do you want to split? Oh, no. You're okay. fine. I can do, I mean, I can do it if you're, if you said you're going to do something else. The or new committee doing? member selection. Okay. Because you want to do the investment, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to do the allocation one. If you want to do the new committee member selection, do you want to do okay. that one? I'll do that one. Okay. Perfect. <coughs> I can do the rest. If no one volunteers for the Navigator, that's okay. every three years. All right, so cultural hub, this one here, Maurice? Yeah. yeah. Somebody else wants to do it. Yeah. Maurice, you can yeah, do I it. Yeah, I, I okay. said I'll do that. Yep. Perfect. Madam Chair? I think that was all we wanted to discuss. The community livability grant? Well, you know, that's pretty staff driven. Mm -hmm. uh, Is it tied to <coughs> applications mostly in the timing of? Yeah. And I think we need to remove Karis from that committee. She decided that since she was going to represent us with the project working group, that she didn't want to be on that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Wonderful. Good work. Let's move to number seven, which is the decision-making process map. And I will initiate the conversation around this. Let me reference uh, two things. One is if you take a look at this long piece of paper uh, that has on the top of it in the center, North Northeast Community Development Initiative Decision-Making Process Map, and then it's color-coded, wonderful. Uh, and reference to the charter uh, on the first page at the bottom of the charter, just a reminder of uh, the responsibility of uh, the Oversight Committee. The Oversight Committee is created to ensure accountability and provide advice for the implementation of the action plan. The primary focus of the action plan is to foster economic empowerment through wealth creation strategies. The Oversight Committee, working with Prosper Portland, will review, advise, and monitor investments according to the strategic policy areas, timelines, metrics, and allocation amounts outlined in the action plan. So what you're looking at is a visual representation to identify how and where decisions from the oversight committee will flow. So if you'll take a moment and kind of look through that. Where you recommend, where you make the determination, and then the process with how it works out. And the idea behind it was to make it simple and visual uh, as much as possible so that there's a sense of clarity of um, the responsibility as well as the authority of this oversight committee. So the language from the charter being put into a visual packet to, to connect the two. Kimberly, did you want to expand any on that? I would pay attention to the definition because um, that really kind of help you understand what it means to monitor, what it means to inform, and so forth. Um, and then you also notice that the final decisions mainly lay with the board uh, with, uh, and um, executive directors. Um, 
And that's all Prosper Court is, right? Yes. Um, but the preliminary recommendation does really inform the decisions, especially um, um, when it comes to um, pro, um, program programmatic awards and and, and re reviewing the annual budget. Um, and so staff will take your recommendations and present them to our executive director for her final decision or her, her final recommendation to Prosper Portland Board. So is this a Prosper Portland will make the final decision? This is not a community-based decision, but one that finally sits, or the final decision will be made after the uh, viewing the recommendations and everything, you will make the final decision, right? And so, in, in um, most cases, um, depending on uh, how much money is involved, is the, the Prosper Portland Board will make that final decision. Right. You, you but Prosper Portland is in the kind of, is in that position. But go ahead, go ahead Michael. So we're just recommending I thought we were the oversight committee, so I thought we would at least know the final word or set in on the on the final word. But we I wonder is it if if we're we're way way going there. down yeah. each of the kind of I think it would be beneficial. Yeah, so you can kind of understand. I think it would be beneficial. Yeah, okay. because even though uh, you're in a position uh, to make you know preliminary recommendation, it's still very impactful. Um, uh, and so let's kind of go down and kind of like review this so you can kind of understand because each of the implementation tools are different and there are some that um, have a lot of that staff driven but then there's others that are um, where you guys will have input into you know how much money is, is you know allocated to that that particular project so promote property ownership and redevelopment um, oftentimes that's implemented by the prosperity improvement program which is a matching grant um, program for business owners and you through our progress report will review the annual annual budget and outreach um, and you can um, make a recommendation on um, if you feel that that money is, is being used um, or aligns with the North Northeast CDI. Um, you also have the individual awards and that's when that's really a staff responsibility who, do, who work with the prop, property owners and determine what their um, investment needs are you kind of monitor that and that's and that's we and you monitor that monitor monitor that in our progress report and you'll see that more tonight when i uh, review the progress report um progr program programmatic changes you kind of inform that say for instance you look at the progress report and you say you know what i don't think that uh we're not reaching african americans we need to look at ways to target more african americans to utilize the PIP program. That is how you kind of inform those program changes. Um, then as we go to um, pr promoting property ownership and redevelopment, um, you again review the annual budget and our outreach and the annual budget, uh, the, the annual budget is reflected in our progress report. and. And that budget was determined when we adopted the plan. But when we adopted the plan, we said this is a living document so that the oversight committee can say, hey, you know what? These dollars aren't moving the way we want. Let's move them somewhere else. Or the accessory drilling unit program is not being supported by the mayor's office or, or uh, other, it's, it's not, that program's not developed the way we had hoped. Let's move it somewhere else. So those are the, ch the type of ways that you can inform that process. Also, um, uh, we have loans 
uh, the uh, commercial property real estate loans. That's kind of a staff driven process where we work with different business owners and property owners. Um, and you kind of monitor that implementation through the progress report. Um, and the final decision, uh, depending on the, how much money those loans are, is, uh, is made by the board um, or Kimberly Branham. Also, we have uh, support business growth and ownership. Similar um, process, um, you guys will monitor the, the budget that's been identified and adopted by the action plan and you will suggest changes if you see that, you know, if there's some adjustments needed. Um, staff will make the uh, initial recommendation for the loan amount and that will be approved by the executive director or, um, or the board. And the same um, with the program changes too. If you feel that there need to be, you know, uh, some changes to the way that the money is being spent or who the, who utilizes the fund. And things get a little bit different with the invest in new and existing homeowners because that program is administered by the Portland Housing Bureau and that's administered and authorized by an intergovernment agency um, agreement that has, that is reviewed and approved by um, Prosper Portland Board um, and their staff is the one that makes the individual awards. They have the authority based on a uh, program guide that's a uh, program guideline that aligns with the intergovernment agreement and that's been a, and that, you know, that IGA is approved by uh, Kimberly Branham and the Prosper Portland Board. However, the same, you can monitor the spending of that money through the progress report or you can determine, you know, uh, in this case, um, the ADU program may not be going forward and you can um, suggest where that money goes because it is funded by the $32 million. So you guys have the ability to monitor and to inform and um, to suggest program changes. And um, advanced community livability grant, um, you guys make the preliminary recommendations about the proposal. Um, now as a, um, that process, you are really kind of engaged in reviewing and making decisions that about who received the funds and your recommendation is forwarded to Kimberly Branham for final decision. And if, uh, in most cases, your decision is, um, is approved by Kimberly Branham. And the cultural hub is going to be very similar to that as well. Once we um, uh, we uh, develop a notice of funding availability, or however we choose to um, to to kind of um, implement that those funds, if there are proposals um, submitted by development teams, then we'll have a subcommittee. The cultural hub will review those proposals and make a preliminary recommendation that will be forwarded to Kimberly Branham for her final decision. Um, and as the, um, in the back of the plan, we have what we call um, outcomes for new practices and policies. And one of those um, is improved marketing and outreach. And that's really our community outreach subcommittee. And that subcommittee is designed to help um, broaden our outreach. And you will make, um, a, we'll create um, a community outreach strategy that will be um, approved by um, Kimberly Branham and, and funds will be al allocated to, to implement that strategy. And, um, Finally, we have um, hiring professional service lo um, loans and um, I'm trying to remember what this, I think that's supposed to be hiring professional services, not loans, but that's when we have professional contractors 
um, like Dr. Ho, mm -hmm. and which is kind of a, we, you guys will inform us, the staff, about, well, you know what, we need a facilitator. So we will take your recommendation and, and, um, and try to uh, procure a consultant as needed. Um, and then finally, we have uh, making minor amendments to the interstate URA. We have the, um, the uh, URA expansion committee who's gonna make a recommendation and we'll forward that recommendation to Kimberly Branham and for her uh, per final decision if the, um, or final recommendation and then she will, she will forward her final recommendation to the board. And and it it could possibly could possibly be a city council decision if it's a uh, if the amendment is a larger area than 40 acres. So, but I'm hoping that kind of gives you an idea of the influence you have. And um, even though the final decision rests on uh, sometimes the Prosper Portland Board, but which is a very public process. So you'll still be involved in um, making, providing input on the final decision because um, for instance, uh, minor amendments will have to go to, uh, will be approved at a, a Prosper Portland board meeting. And so you can have influence there. Um, and so any de final decisions will be discussed in a, a open forum. Questions, comments? Yeah, that's a uh, wow. I have a question. Um, yeah. It seems like pretty consistently across the board, the Portland Housing Bureau staff has the final decision on individual um, grants. If you could explain that decision and also. Because the, the P Portland Housing Bureau um, implements our, house, our housing program. So, so for the business growth and ownership. Where is She's on number two. Number two. Mm -hmm. And the numbers one and two don't deal explicitly in um, housing. Tenant improvements. I'm not understanding, I'm sorry. So if you look at section number two, where it says support business growth and ownership, mm -hmm. and if we go to uh, tenant TI loans, individual awards, if you go over to the Portland Housing Bureau section, it says final decision if no exception. I believe that's your question. Oh, or I just um, that I'm just recognizing that there's a pattern for individual grants. It's it's, it's either Prosper I'm Portland or the Portland Housing Bill. Then that's good. Um, but in this case, it would be Prosper Portland. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. So I just wanted for members that weren't here at the last board meeting to just talk about what. what Thank you very much. Um, for a point of order and or flow that if you have something you'd like to say as one of the uh, oversight committee members, we're asking you to take your name tag, stand it on end, and I will make sure to call you. Um, that way we can keep everybody from speaking all at the same time, especially for those who are on the phone. Uh, Maurice. Yeah, I, I think this is very helpful. I think this is some of the information that we're looking for mm -hmm. just as far as roles and responsibilities. One of the things I don't see on is timelines. Um, so from going to left to right on this sheet, how long does that take? And also we're looking at expending these funds over the next five years. So I'd imagine we'd want to start expending them pretty quickly because I think we're quite a ways behind if we're going to spend the money. And so then it becomes, okay, where are the priorities? How do we see this is the first thing we're, we're doing? Um, obviously, I'd like to see the money get out the gate quicker rather, or sooner rather than later. And so how do we actually make sure that this process is flowing as quickly as we can potentially have it and can Prosper Portland or Portland Housing Bureau provide us with what they look at as their schedule so that we can make sure that we're aligning with the schedule that you guys envision? I think that's a great suggestion. And I, I will add a timeline. And um, the next time you, you receive the progress report, we wanna be a little bit more detailed too. Um, and so we, we, ha we even have a, a, a format in mind that I'll share with, with the committee that will kind of look at um, the budget and, and, and the amount that's been alloc allocated as to date, you know, so that you'll know how much money. And um, 
like for instance right now, I like to think 11%. Yeah, 11% of the funds have been spent to date, which is, like you said, it's not much. And so that's why we want to uh, work on the community outreach. We want to get that going pretty quick so we can get the word out and, and get the, um, uh, so we can start seeing the dollars go out the door. Yeah. Okay, but I think that's a great idea. We're at the timeline. Leisha. Yeah, I wanted to ask <clears throat> for our preliminary recommendations um, that end with Port Prosper Portland staff, um, are our recommendations weighted at all? Yes, they are. Uh, in most cases, um, our preliminary recommendation is is weighed by your input. I mean, you'll see it. It, it would be your input would be integrated into our preliminary recommendation. And so, and we're talking about transparency, will these be written documents? How, how will our recommendations leave from here? If it's more than a vote, yay or nay, doesn't necessarily tell the story of how we got to that final recommendation. Mm -hmm. Recommendation, so how will those recommendations? It, it really depends on the situation. Um, but we can, you know, discuss um, how, what would be a, a, a good process to kind of formalize that. I, I know we talked about maybe having Dr. Hoke um, kind of guide the subcommittee through kind of a, a how to make a formal um, recommendation. And uh, Alicia and I was thinking maybe, you know, all the sub subcommittee leads or whoever want to come could come to a session where you kind of help us maybe develop tools and to create those those final Absolutely. recommendations. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Leisha. For you. Sorry. Thank you, Shanisha. Um, <clears throat> this is all good and, I, and and everything, but what bothers me a little bit is the fact that we, it's like saying we the people and the people are not there, you know, and it's like, so when we talk about community-based outreach and services. It's rare, and when I talk to the community itself, most of them are not aware that even these initiatives exist. And so it's like, so is it gonna be the, the process of the committees to be able to get that out into the community? Or, or I mean, how is that going? Is it gonna be on maybe a, your site to let them know how do we do the initial work to get the community aware that there is options and there is funding and things of that nature because when I'm just talking to community-based organizations or people within stuff, it's like they're not aware that this money exists. Yeah, I, um, that is a concern of, of mine as well. And I, and I think our community outreach strategy should have to be two-pronged. One is um, making people aware of the, the tools and, you know, and, and products that we have and also have making them aware of the community, the oversight committee meetings so that they can come and provide their input. Um, so we're gonna uh, really, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that the subcommittee will look at, you know, start to come develop a strategy for, for you know, for reaching, outreach. reaching everyone, you know, that could benefit from, from these um, tools and not just those in the interstate, but also those who are living in, um, in uh, each county that may want to come back or, or may want to um, utilize some um, business op opportunities in the in interstate corridor or urban renewal area. I just want to respond to Ms. Smith. Real to Janisha. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. So. Um, Janisha, if you're done, you can. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, the, the, the subcommittee will come up with a strategic plan on how we want to approach this. But I want to just say now, and Dr. Holt can maybe speak to this if you hold a session with the leads that what what your role is specifically is to give Prosper Portland staff uh, the initiative or the work that you want them to do right uh -huh. that, that that they would be in charge of doing that fits in line with your strategic plan that the subcommittee comes up with so the onus is not necessarily all on on you as an individual to get this word out. Prosper Portland is the mechanism that we need to use to get the word out to the community. 
that plan that you come up with on the subcommittee can inform that, but <coughs> this is not your nine to five, so I don't want you to feel that pressure of feeling like this is something that you have to do, but you need to hold them accountable to do the things that you want them to, to do, if that makes sense. And, I th and that goes for everybody, because I think we can start to feel overwhelmed and we'll lose people and, you know, we're, we're, we're coming to meet one Thursday a month and we're doing some subcommittees, but we have to get into the habit of giving Kimberly and Prosper Portland to say, this is what we're looking for. Can you, you are, you are the experts in this. Can you please go out and do this? In terms of implementation, in absolutely. Of implementation. But in terms of strategy and in terms of thought, in terms of engagement, then that's the responsibility of the oversight committee to think through all of those elements. No. Or each of those. <laughs> Uh, I was going to respond to you. Uh, I think from the get-go, I think a big concern we had as a committee is that our outreach was not, is not working. So I think that's what the subcommittee would do is what has been done so far and that hasn't been working. And what can we do to outreach more and what's a strategy that's going to work. And I think as a subcommittee, we'll have more time to kind of look at data and information and see the things that work and that don't work and then bring it to the whole committee and then we can discuss and we can, you know, put that on the staff to make sure that that's implemented. And we can give them, you know, the information requested and say, hey, this, you guys have been outreaching this way and it hasn't been effective, like this community is not being served and this is the recommendation we came with and let's implement this as I think that's, I think what I see the committee doing, the subcommittee doing. <coughs> Thank you, Hobbin, if you'd put your name tag back. Maurice. So I just have a quick question. And so the subcommittees are going to come up with a plan, right? And we're going to inform the public about this plan. And then we're going to come up with recommendations. And then the recommendations are the, either going to be determined by the PDC board um, or the director or potentially uh, City Hall. Now, if we go through this process and the community is on board and says, okay, we, we like what you guys are putting together, and then we make this recommendation, and that recommendation is either greatly changed or just not accepted, what is the firewall for us when the community is looking at us saying, you said you're doing this, we went to your meetings, you, we've engaged, and now all of a sudden you're not doing it. So how is Prosper Portland looking at protecting us as committee members on those decisions that aren't under our control? I, that's a good question. And I think, um, I think if we ever get to that situation that you'll be well informed of why um, we chose not to uh, agree or approve your recommendation and that um, the protection I, I believe you have is that <coughs> they know that this decision was, this, that decision was made by Prosper Portland and not the Oversight Committee. And that it was, um, uh, and I, I think that at that point, you shouldn't be surprised. Can you I should also? never be surprised by that, uh, yeah. by yeah. Um, our, our disapproval of your recommendation. Okay. I, I think it's important to keep that constant communication between us and Prosper Portland. If you feel like there is a direction that we're going that you feel like it's not going to pass um, through the gate, um, but on the same end of it, um, to inform us on your decision is one thing, but to inform the public on why mm -hmm. that decision was not accepted is another thing. And I think it's up to Portland mm -hmm. or whoever makes a decision to not go with the recommendation to inform the public or to come to this meeting to explain their decision. It's not important that we know your decision, but it's important that the public knows the decision. And so if I can speak to two things, Maurice, I think uh, part of the responsibility and one of the reasons to create this is to also make sure that as people begin to attend the meetings, that they understand the process as well, mm -hmm. that they understand the limitations, they understand the scope and the reach of the oversight committee. I think that's one part that's necessary is that the community is clear on how this committee functions and operates. The second thing I think that this committee has the opportunity to do is once a decision is made, is then to ask 
those individuals and or a representative group of the Prosper Portland Board to come and have a meeting with the Oversight Committee to explain that process with, com with, uh, with the community being present. That's part of the leverage of the Oversight Committee. So it isn't just a private discussion, it also has this opportunity for public engagement. And, and I'd even go one step further if, if they do a written response to the recommendation and why it's been turned down. I'd rather be able to hand someone a piece of paper and say, I've got rock control, than rather to sit there and say, please come to this meeting on this date to hear why it was out of our control. So I think a decent request would be say, for everything that is not accepted by this committee, that we have a written response to the entity to say the why they're not accepting our recommendation. Absolutely. Vicki Gwynn. I want to go back to something um, Tanisha had uh, mentioned, and I think um, it's just having enough information to feel informed. Many of us are in this community and serving on this, so we may not be the final decision makers, or this is not our, our job, and I appreciate what you said, but it's feeling like you had enough information, and I'll go back to one of the first meetings when I asked the question, who is the pool? How many people in the demographic? Is, is can this impact so and fit within the income criteria and and then I think we will feel comfortable knowing what's a realistic figure and then how we can ask the question how are you targeting these specific people for instance hypothetical mm -hmm. the people who fit the demographic may live on XYZ Street but we're reaching out to a street so I think that's kind of the background information that we're trying to get, who we're dealing with. And we can say, I don't know how many African Americans and African immigrants live in Portland metro area. Let's say 10,000. But there may be only 1,000 with this. So I think that's, that's kind of what you're saying is yeah, thank you. whether we have enough information um, to feel that we are reaching the people that we need to reach. That's mm -hmm. something else that I does that make sense? It does, and we actually have some really great conversations with Lisha and Maurice about an impact study, mm -hmm. and um, I actually reached out to Dr. Lisa Bates to, to maybe do that study for us, um, and she's um, while she she's not available to do that, but she is going to help us scope uh, provide the scope of work, and so that we can. Um, uh, go out with a, a, a contract to find someone to kind of look at um, the demographics in the area and also mainly to look at when we're making decisions, how do those decisions impact um, the people in the community? And, and Maurice is actually, this is his kind of a, a request that he made from in the very beginning. He could talk more about what, what he's hoping to get out of this study. Yeah, well, so the go ahead. I was going to say, so that, yeah, the impact study would hopefully, what it does is looks at who's in the area, who's in the surrounding areas, and making sure what we do positively affects African Americans and actually, and kind of taking that data and then using that data to make our decisions throughout this process. So we, we looked at that as being like one of the first steps that we should do is see what that impact study reveals to us. Um, that um, encourage or try to help business owners become property owners. And so um, so we, we, we kind of want to provide not only uh, money for tenant improvements, but we have wraparound services to kind of encourage uh, business owners to become property owners. And so they won't be in that position of being priced out of the business. And we won't be in a, in a position of investing in a, a property uh, on behalf of a tenant who's going to be priced out, you know, in the future. So we, we are very aware of that, and it, it, it's, it's a challenge because you want to make sure that there are spaces, affordable spaces available for business owners who, who don't own property, but at the same time, you want to position them to be in a place to uh, become property owners. Um, so it, it, it's, it's not a black and white issue, it's, it's very complex, but, um, but we're very aware of that. And, um, and we have specific um, 
our, on, our, on our application, we're very um, intentional on identifying if, you know, who is the property owner. And also, the grant goes with the property, so you can only receive so many funds. So um, we want to make sure that we're not, uh, our, our funds are not going to repeat users and that there's a limit to uh, how much our property owners can receive. So. Tom, did that answer your question? Yes, but I, uh, I have a follow-up question. So in the existing homeownership category, it mentioned down payment assistance to help achieve the ownership. I wonder if it makes sense that in addition to an, in the small supported business category and ownership, if it makes sense we add a, a, a tool that not only TI loans, but uh, state clearly that there's a tool to achieve ownership. Mm -hmm. Because I, for when I read it, when I read the sport business growth and tool, to, the tools that to achieve it, doesn't really clearly say state that uh, we will. Here's how we can achieve for ownership. Because to me, looking at TI loans, it's just a tenant improvement, uh, and from that context is simply helping the tenant rather than the owner. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's a category in the sandbox that says, you know, we will help pay support with payment assistance or something in that uh, context to help achieve ownership. Uh, right now, I, I just reading that I, I is really main, mainly um, around renter and tenant rather than um, owner. I agree with that. That actually came up during our community forums about having maybe a, a similar program for business owners, um, a down payment assistance program. And maybe that's something that the oversight committee can, you know, wrestle with when uh, if there's, you know, different uh, additional dollars and maybe creating um, or, or uh, maybe uh, put, presenting an, uh, a proposal to create such a program and working with possible Portland to do that. Tom, no, uh, point well taken, and I think uh, an opportunity to follow up on that um, is uh, accessible through dialoguing with other committee members to make that specific goal. Any other questions or comments in regard to the decision-making process? No. Uh, good to see. All right. Ready to move to the next item? Very good. Year-end report, Kimberly. And just briefly, um, like I said earlier, 11% of the dollars have been implemented so far. So roughly $3 million uh, or $3,500,000 have been implemented out of the $32 million um, in year one. Um, we are now entering year two. Um, and so far, um, 26 um, property owners have received $1.5 million of PIP funds, and 12 business owners have received $607,000 of PIP funds, which is our most robust, successful program. And the PIP program is a matching um, uh, it's a, a matching program where a property owner or a business owner can re receive up to $75,000 to improve their, their property. And they uh, have to bring in like a 25% match. And we and only in the interstate corridor urban renewal area is the match able to be financed. And we provide like a micro loan so that if an owner does not have that $25,000, or whatever the math is, 25% of the total project up to 75,000, um, they will have the opportunity to to um, finance that. And it's a great program. It, um, the program is a new program that um, uh, that was integrated three old programs: the the DOS, the storefront program, and our green feature program was rolled into this new PIP project program, which is a very popular product, um, and it's, um, and if you look at the chart to your, to your right, 
you will see the breakdown of the PIP program per um, demographic. 15% um, of the dollars have gone to African immigrants. 44% have gone to African Americans. 38% of those funds were uh, get, uh, pro given to a uh, provided to Asians, and 3% of those dollars was uh, received by Latino community. Um, and um, also, we had one uh, property development loan, which is uh, the $25,000 micro loan that was um, given to a PIP recipient. Um, so far, there's no large scale projects that have gone out the door, and there's no tenant improvement um, funds that have gone out. There has been three home repair program um, recipients. Um, um, two of them were African American and, and one was a white with a total of 120,000. Um, and also there was 15 community livability grant programs, um, uh, grants that was given out with a total of $1.14 million. Um, and um, interstate urban renewal area is the largest urban renewal area and they received the most funding for the community livability grant. And, and there's no activity with the cultural business hub. Are there any questions? Maurice. So on the uh, grant recipients that you have here, have they, are they new to getting grants from um, Prosper Portland or are they just? We, Repeat users. Um, most of them uh, have been new uh, recipients, uh, like Construct and Hope, with mm -hmm. the first time they received, and they received quite a large grant from us. Um, the Billy Webb Lodge mm -hmm. was, they received uh, two, two CGL grants, but they were the first time that they ever received those funds. Um, we also um, funded uh, um, a school district, mm -hmm. and that was the first time they received um, a funds. Well, it was a school program. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It was a, 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 a Bravo, or, um, mm -hmm. and that was the first time they received those funds. Um, so there was a lot of first time. Okay. Uh, would it be possible to have to basically a little bit more of a breakdown with ones that are for profit, <laughs> non profit? and um, just first recipients and repeat recipients. Sure, and we do have a maximum. So once you receive 300,000, you, you're no longer eligible for the funds, mm -hmm. so. Shanisha. Um, my question is also um, in relationship to, um, did we ever discuss, did we ever come to the point that those people who served on the committee would not be eligible for the certain funds. You know, if you, you serve, you know, more community based and if you serve, would that cut you from the eligibility? We did talk about that and you're, you're eligible if you're not in the position of making a decision about the funds. So you can't serve on the community livability grant subcommittee if you're involved with an organization that's seeking the funds. Um, and you can't um, uh, you have to be very careful uh, you you should not be a member of the cultural hub business hub if you plan on submitting a development proposal so, so that is a no so yes but if you're not you know if you're not in a position of of making a decision then you're eligible to serve on those various committees. You just can't be in a position of making a decision if, it, if you're gonna personally benefit from that. And the last question I had, had in was in relationship to those properties that were being taken out of. We were gonna discuss that differently, right? This wasn't part of the committee, but the, will is there going to be maybe a review of those, those that property that was, was taken out just because um, 
in 2003, I think, is when they made a decision to take certain parts out of the interstate corridor areas. And will that maybe eventually be put back? Because that's my property. Yeah. <laughs> you <know>? yeah. <laughs> so so we'll, we'll look at those, and we'll talk more about that. And, and um, I, I need to kind of talk to our attorney about your role in, in terms of making a recommendation about that amendment if, if it includes your property. Okay. So. So Thank you, Maurice. Just really quickly as well, as far as a lot of those proposals we had looked at, uh, what's Prosper Portland doing um, in their proposals? They had a series of things that, um, whether it was like developers or, excuse me, contractors who they were using, architects on who they were using, and so on throughout the construction process. Um, what's Prosser Portland doing to assure that what they said in their proposal they're actually doing? And it, is this relating to uh, the cultural related. hub or the? Um, some of the previous grants that you, um, not constructing hope, so I don't want to just throw that out there. Um, but I'm just saying that I know that a lot of people write these proposals and they look really glossy and look really nice and they mm -hmm. say how much they're, they're going to engage the community mm -hmm. and what they're going to do. What are we doing to assure that what they said that they're gonna do, as far as Prosper Portland, that they actually do it? What is your mechanism? Well, the, for both the PIP and the CLG, there's a 20%, there's a requirement that you um, use 20% of the work uh, with uh, minorities and disadvantaged um, min uh, contractors. Um, so pardon me. MWESB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and and minority women emerging small businesses. And, and so I guess my, my kind of blanket concern is on several of them where we were reviewing we were very impressed with their team as far as their utilization of those firms. Mm -hmm. They went beyond just the Prosper Portland requirement, right? And that was one of, the, one of the reasons why we thought their proposal was really strong. Mm -hmm. Now, on the side of accountability, making sure that they actually do that, because if I tell you, let's say I'm going to use 75% utilization and I'm selected for that project, mm -hmm. and then I turn around and go to 20%, I feel like that's a little bait and switch. So how is Prosper Portland ensuring what they said that they were going to do in the proposal, mm -hmm. that they do it? You know, I think it's kind of built into our process because um, our application is, has been streamlined over the years mm -hmm. to kind of make it a, a, a easier process to access the funds and to go through the whole approval process. But once that goes from approval to a project manager, mm -hmm. um, we monitor the invoices. We make sure that um, each of the um, applicants provide. Um, inf we have a. I'm gonna back up. We have a letter of agreement that starts the process, and it's it's based on a budget template. It's based on the bids that um, that uh, identify who the contractors will be. So it's kind of built into that process to make sure that they meet our guidelines for the diversity goals. And, um, and it's, it's, it's a very hand-drawn process where our project managers are available and working with the applicants. Um, and it's, it's part of it, it probably is kind of a trust issue, but the, the invoices and the, the bid should show who those contractors are. And so we'll know that, you know, and so on those contractors and developers, if you could keep this group posted on any types of substitutions. So if a minority firm gets substituted with a majority firm, I think this group would really like to know that. If a utilization is high for workforce and gets greatly reduced, I think this group would be interested to know that, especially as we're trying to expend these funds. I would like to see the highest utilization of people in the neighborhood and people that look like us on those projects. And if we don't monitor it, it could potentially be problematic. Yeah, I agree. I think you know, we're definitely can Thank keep you. an eye on that. It would be very helpful if you could 
give us some ideas. As you know, as a contractor, you know the, the tricks <laughs> 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 that you know could help us prevent prevent okay. that. We can at least talk offline, Alicia. Um, so I was just looking at the first progress report from January to June and comparing it to the year end report. And so I wanted to know under the Prosperity Investment Program matching grant program, mm -hmm. there's Latino 3%, 44,000 in this new report. And in the old report, it says 13.6%. 44. So that may just be a typo. I no, or I think it's just when you. It's changed. The percentage just changed. The percentage changes. changes. <laughs> okay. Because the amount of money. Yeah. So with the Asian, the amount of money has like quadruple or more. So I'm wondering if there's any information that you can provide to us on why or how. Is that one person or what? Was it the outreach was different? How? If, if you can I, you account know, for that. Honestly, it's just word of mouth. You know, you, you see, you know, communities and helping each other, and, you know, the word is oh. spreaded in their community faster than they spread it in, in other communities. I'm seeing that also among the African immigrant community, mm -hmm. too, that, you know, and, and right now it's kind of uh, word of mouth, That's you know, so... I think it's really um, or kind of an organic process now that's, that's happening. For the Asian community. For, for both the Asian and the Afri African, yeah. African immigrant communities. As you see, you know, um, uh, different people come in. You know, I, I can see, you could kind of see that, you know, the, peop the word is out in certain communities and not others, you know. Yeah. And is that because of the word is good? Is there more success stories in certain communities? I, I would tend to believe that I'm going to share with my friends successes uh, that would make them want to engage and, and yeah. you know, participate. Yeah. I mean, the, the amount for the African American community went up as well uh, over the course of the year, but that, that just was a really big jump for me for the Asian community. So it would be nice to know if there's information that we can use real information that we can use when we have the strategy, the, the strategic planning around outreach that would help to increase those numbers for the Latino, for African American, or wh whoever mm -hmm. we're outreaching for. So I think having a little bit more depth in this, this progress report, and maybe that's the place for the uh, subcommittees, mm -hmm. but. I think that's a good, good insight. Thank you, Dorsey. Alicia. On the applications, do Alicia. we have a question that's asking how they hear about the progress? You know, I don't think, I think, I don't think we do. That could be a good idea. Say it one more time. What did you say? On the application, is there a question that's asking um, how they hear about the program or the grant? Because that way that would answer our question as well. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Great discussion. Any other question or comment in regard to the year in report? Very well done. Thank you so much. We have a few moments left and. Uh, there's an opportunity for public comment. I uh, don't know if you, sir, have anything you wanted to say in regard to tonight's moment. Well, we'd love to hear from you. No, no. <laughs> you have to come to the mic because we need to capture it. We've got some people on the phone who would need to hear you, and then also it is being recorded, and we want to capture your thoughts. So you have, um, if I can get my clock to go. I'm going to give you four minutes. I just want to, my name is Richard Brown, and I just want to thank um, all of you for the work that you were, you're doing. As I was listening, I heard a lot of issues that came up that have come up in the past, and they are problems that were in the past that came up in these conversations. And a lot of times, they were problems because people didn't know what questions to ask. And it's evident to me that you all are getting information from somewhere, maybe it's just intuition, about the problems that we've had in the communities in the past. And the city or the city, you all from the city? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The city is obviously paying attention to the problems that have um, come up in the communities before. So I want to appreciate, want you all to know that I appreciate the work that you're doing, having been in the community a long time, listening 
to these issues and feeling like it isn't going anywhere and we're telling the same stories over and over and over again. I think this was a break from that and it was refreshing. Um, I heard you talking about the word, the information getting out. Especially with new people to the country, I think that a lot of times just because they don't speak the language, information goes through their communities Quickly. fast. I think for us folks that have been here for 400 years, we have become so distrustful of each other that we don't pass the word around. And that's what we've got to get around. We've got to figure out how to bring people to the table and give them information, whether we agree with them or not. And I think that's been missing. And you know, I, I, I make that a challenge to you. How do we get these folks who don't agree? I don't like. Well, then to that end, we are going to end our meeting. And I'll let you dismiss. Our next gathering is scheduled for February 15th uh, at this location at the same time. Mm -hmm. Is that in relationship to what you were asking about, Alvin? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I was saying that we would uh, maybe make the applications due on the 5th okay. so that we have time to review, go to Kim for final approval, and then we have someone at this table by next week. Yeah, so this is the scheduled, regularly scheduled meeting yeah. for the 15th. All right. I'm just so happy to see everyone here. We have corn. <laughs> this is like <laughs> the biggest uh, attendance we've had in a while. So thank you for everyone um, coming out tonight. And with that, I think that we are adjourned and you are dismissed. Have a good evening. Thank you.